Hi friends and welcome back to the Elf's Kitchen. Tonight we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be talking about one of the most popular foods in Japan. It's curry, but not just any curry. It's Japanese curry. Japanese curry is different from Indian, Thai, Chinese, Korean, Sri Lankan, uh, Bangladesh, all those other curries are made significantly differently from what the Japanese prefer. It's really a comfort food in Japan. These restaurants like this one that's called Coco and now spreading the United States called Gogo -Go Curry restaurants are extremely popular. And the curry is a very warm, it's not overly uh, spicy. Uh, you can get it in different spice levels and it is really simple. But tonight we're gonna to do is we're gonna take store-bought curry, which is the easiest to make if you just want a quick meal. It looks like this. It's called, uh, this is S&B curry. There are a number of different curries and I'll show you a storefront in just a minute. But we're gonna do this, but we're not just gonna use this because this is a nice base, it's easy to use. But we're gonna seriously enhance this and make an incredibly tasty curry with rice out of it. Got my trusty rice maker over here. It's already made the rice, so we don't have to do that. It's all ready to go. But what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go ahead and start right now. Now I have to tell you that there's a number of things that, uh, about curry that you should be aware of. First of all, if you buy these things, there's, they're currently it's vegetarian. There's no meat, there's no meat products in it. So it, it's easy to use. There are a lot of different versions on the market. If you go to a store, you can find all kinds of uh, curries like these that I'm showing you right now on the shelf. Mostly they're S and B, which is what I'm using tonight, but there's Vermont and there's some others. There's also some that you don't even have to cook. You just need to warm up and, yeah, you know, you don't really want those. They're not really all that good. So that's really awesome. But tonight what we're going to do is we're going to make an enhanced curry using, using this curry base as a base, but we're going to make it so much better because we're going to be adding some products that you won't find on the package. Most people that make this, they just maybe a little, some diced potatoes, a few carrots, some onions into the pot, thicken it up with the roux. Roux is a thickening agent. And they're done. They throw it over rice or noodles or whatever and eat and quick and easy. Yeah, it tastes good, but we can make it a whole lot better. So let's do that. What we're going to do is we're going to be using a number of ingredients. And those ingredients include everything from uh, onions, uh, mushrooms, potato. Um, we're going to have some an apple even, some carrot, a little celery. We're going to add a little garlic, a little ginger. We're going to use shrimp this time. You can use any protein you want to make a good, good curry, whether you want vegetarian, you want to make it pescatarian like we're doing tonight with, with a seafood product, or you can use beef, chicken, or pork. doesn't matter. Every one of them enhances it a different way. Uh, we're also going to add some, some, uh, frozen, uh, snow, or some frozen peas, baby peas, just before it's finished. It's going to be awesome. So stand by. We're going to go. Now, I have one thing that I got to do because uh, I'm a fine, I love this fine Irish stuff, you know. I have to take a little sip here and there. You know, it's, it's, it's healthy, I think. You know, uh, Jameson's not so good. This is Bushmills. Jameson's is for beginners. Bushmills is the good stuff. All right, so take a sip. All right, the first thing we're going to talk about tonight is we're going to talk about what we're going to be doing on here, the cutting board. And this is the cutting board we're going to be using. Now, there's some safety tips and some other things I'm going to give you today to maybe make your life a little safer and a lot easier. One of which is that this right now is sliding all over the place. You know, if you're using a knife out here and you accidentally slip while it's, while it's sliding because you're trying to cut something, you know, your, your knuckles, whatever, could be very dangerous. So you need to be able to stabilize this cutting board somehow. There's a couple of easy ways to do that. One is this rubbery shelf liner stuff that you can buy in rolls in, in the stores. This pluff is awesome. You take it off, put it on the, on the base, throw the cutting board back on, and this thing is as solid as can be. If you don't have any shelf liner or drawer liner, all you have to do is take a, a kitchen dish towel, um, a dish, yeah, dish towel, uh, wet it, wring it out, put it underneath here. It should be almost as good. All right, so the tools we're going to be using for this thing, we've got a an eight inch chef knife and we'll talk a little bit about this chef knife here shortly which is my very favorite. We're going to use this curved pair which is really the only uh, knife in the in the whole 
set of knives that you have where you're going to be facing the cutting edge to you, and that's easy to use. We'll be using an OXO garlic mincer because we're going to be mincing some garlic. Of course, we have a shredder mincer and a spoon, which is very important. Okay, and then we're going to start off by doing a number of things, and we need to basically do what's called mise en place. Mise en place is a, a system where you're preparing the stuff you're going to cook before you actually take it to the oven or to the stove to actually do something. So we're going to need to chop this stuff up. I'm going to cut this short. I'm going to, I'm going to do this, but I'm going to speed up everything once I do each as we, But then I'll speed up the video so that we get, you don't have to send through 10 minutes of me cutting up an onion. But there are a couple of things about it that I'd like to share with you. Okay, so let's start with the onion. Onions, we always have to have onion. Onion is awesome because you can caramelize them, you can make them translucent or whatever. A lot of people don't know how to cut an onion real well, and we're going to talk about that right now. So let's get on the cutting board. This is the root section of the, of the onion. If you're going to be dicing or, or chopping onions in any way, you don't want to cut that portion off because the onion will fall apart. As long as you have that root on here, the root section, not this side, but the root section, everything's going to stick together. So what we want to do first is we're going to make a flat spot on the bottom. So I'm just going to take the front part and just do a nice cut and look what we got here. Look at that, stand straight up. We'll have the root again right at the top. Now you can do things a couple of different ways. You can actually cut it on the side, but I like to cut it straight down from the root. And I get two sections of onion very easily. Okay. When you do that, it makes it very easy to peel, peel the, uh, the skin off of the top skin off of the onion, if I can get to it, and you've got easy, easy access to your onion. You know, I've just got my little, my little thing over there. Now, if I was going to, I'm going to hold that for a side, but for a moment, I've got this other half, and I don't think I'm going to be using it. I just want one, one uh, side of the onion. So a good way to save that so you don't waste, waste your, your, your good product is to get a piece of this uh, of this saran wrap place it flat on a, on the thing take your take the other onion once you've gotten off whatever's on there place it flat side down on the saran wrap pick up the four corners very simply and twist okay and there you have it it's ready to go back in the refrigerator and it will stay fresh because it's all airtight so we'll do that now back to our back to our onion I don't want to really dice this into small pieces. I want fairly large pieces because everything we do tonight is going to have to do with, um, it's kind of a mouthful of food. So I'm going to make uh, three cuts in the onion. I'm going to make one in the middle, straight down the middle, make one over here and one over here. And that's it. And then holding the knife. Now let's talk about that a little bit. I see a lot of people who are videos and other things, advertisements that come from China or something and they're, and they're showing a, a model with a knife and what they're doing is they're putting their they have their finger on top of this knife like that's the right thing to do well guess what you have no control over the knife that way really you think you do because your knife you think your finger is guiding it but when you hit something strong and whatever it's gonna you don't you can't control the knife from turning and it, that's very very dangerous I recommend you use a, a claw grip if you will if you have your thumb on one side basically guiding on the other basically running the of the handle there so that you have full group. Now you have total control over the movement. Nothing is going to make that thing go in any other way. And you don't have to hold it like a like you're hanging on for dear life. Simple use and it's great. So we have those three cuts. All we're going to do is just cut. We use this fulcrum cut which means we go from the front of the knife to the back of the knife. Very very easy. And we're done. And that's all we got to do. And then I've just got these, these mise en place glasses, if you will. We're just going to use these to keep track of the stuff that we're going to be putting in later. And that's done. And we just toss the other little piece of, well, let me get a little slice out of that. That's good. We get that. We'll put that in there. And that's ready to go. So what's next? Now we got to go to our, our potato. And the potato is going to be peeled. I'm going to save you the hassle. I'm going to pause right here. I'm going to peel this potato. We'll come back when I'm done. All right, now we've got our potato peeled. And what we want to do is we want to make bite-sized pizzas out of everything. You don't want to do anything too small. Also, the larger pieces of, of potato that are more bite-sized, the more of the, of the curry that they'll absorb, and you get a full taste of the curry when you do it. So what we're going to do is we're just going to cut 
A um, few different um, things here. We're basically, you can see me just cutting here. I'm just going to cut some cubes. Those are about bite-sized pieces. That's pretty simple. And we get that over there. And this is going to be easy to cook. And we're actually going to put this in boiling water just to get it fork tender when we're ready. So the potatoes are done. Okay. The next thing we're going to do, and I'll save you the hassle, I'm going to do the same thing with the shallot that I did. This is a shallot. I'm going to cut it the same way I did the onion, only it's a lot smaller. And I'm just going to use some diced stuff because we're going to flavor the oil in the saute pan with uh, garlic, ginger, and a little bit of shallot before we add other things to be cooked in it. So stand by. I'll be back with you in a minute. All right, so we've got our, we've got our shallots done. And now I've, I've just peeled a little bit of ginger. Um, I've taken off the top. I don't use a, a normal sh uh, peeler. I just use a spoon to get a little bit of the stuff off. And then what I do is I'm just going to take this uh, over here on this side, and I'm just going to create a little bit so that I've got some to put in my... In my and I'm just going to put that in with the shallots since they're all going to go in together, the same thing. And that is going to be really good for flavoring the oil before we actually start sauteing. So that's done. Now, what's next? Now, a lot of people will use this kind of garlic. And I, there's nothing wrong with that. This oil, garlic, minced garlic and oil, it's fine. But here's the problem. Most people don't realize that this goes bad after a while, even in the fridge. So it's important if you're going to use this that you un unto it and give it a good smell. If it doesn't smell really garlicky, it's already done, throw it away. In the meantime, I've got some real garlic here, so we're just going to take this, we're going to cut the edges, and then we'll peel it. And there's no really, there's some easy ways to peel garlic if you've, if you've, got, if you've got it ready to go already, but it, uh, I just need a couple of, of, of garlics, and I'll, I'll pause and as soon as all right, so now I've got these two garlic cloves peeled, and what I need to do is add that to my to my shallots and my uh, and my ginger, and I use this OXO O X O garlic uh, press, and I, I I have to say that I really recommend it. It's very heavy duty, it lasts really well. It's easy to clean because of these these red uh, external uh, spots. When you when you want to clean it, you just turn it over the other side, and it and it punches anything that's still stuck in there. So all we got to do is we got to just put a, a garlic clove in there. We do that. We put it over this, over that there. Take that. Take a spoon, a little bit of wipe off. Take it out, and look what happens. We you take that out, and you just have this little nothing there. You could probably do that again, just to kind of do that. But same thing again. Whoops. Oh. Clean. Put that in there, and once again, we just do that. And now we've got basically the flavoring ready to go for our, our saute pan once we're done. All right, I'm going to pause while I get ready to do the next step, and I'll be back. Here we go. If you remember the beginning of this, I told you that we do everything in bite-sized pieces. And i got to tell you, these baby, these baby carrots or small carrots are great for that. And all we really have to do is just barely cut off the very ends. That Most of these will be cut in half, and we're ready to go into uh, mise en place and ready to go. Now, while I'm cutting these, I want to talk to you about this knife. There are a lot of knives. I have all kinds of knives. I've got tons of knives I've collected over the years, and, you know, chef's knives as well as other knives. And, you know, what you really need is a knife that's for cooking, not for looking. You know, a lot of knives really look great. They have Damascus markings and all kinds of, of you know, the hoopla and expensive and you know, special, you know, very aesthetic and beautiful handles and other things. But you know what? If they don't cut well for you and they don't make it easy on your life, then, well, what you have is a nice looking knife that you can show off to your friends. But if you want to cook and make things really simple, you want a decent knife. Now, I've gone through a lot of knives and I didn't know this, but the knife that I have picked that I love the most is actually not only my best choice, but America's Test Kitchen's choice as well after testing a number of many, many knives. And this knife is the Victorinix 8-inch Chef's Knife. 
It is by the same company that makes the Swiss Army knives, and it has a number of features, which is that it's light, it's balanced, it's very sharp. It comes with 15 degree um, bevels on both sides, which is, used to be only made with Asian knives, but now even the Europeans are starting to ad adopt the 15, uh, bevel, 15 degree bevels because um, it's, it's easier to cut with it and it makes it really good. The handle, you notice, is, is not like a wood handle that's straight through. This is made of a, of a material called Fibrox by Victor Inix. It's very comfortable. It's a plasticky kind of, of thing, but the, everything is very ergonomic. It feels really good. My finger on this side of the blade just fits like a glove when I'm, when I'm cutting, and, and my thumb just rides right on the edge. It gives me massive control. Now, the great thing about this knife is it's not expensive. I've got knives that cost $200, $300. This knife on Amazon costs well, somewhere between $30 and $35 if it's even that high. It's an amazing knife, and many places have rated this the best chef knife that you could possibly have. It's made for cooking, not looking. It's not one that you would hang up on a wall and say, look at that beautiful knife. What it is, it's a very functional and utilitarian knife that works just perfectly, and I can use this thing for hours without tiring or fatigue. Um, if you can't afford $30, there is a, uh, my next one is actually a cheaper knife. Uh, it's not quite as good as the, as the uh, Victor Inix, but it's a great deal on Amazon. And it's the Mercer 8-inch uh, knife, which has a silicon plastic handle, very similar in a way in design, and also with a 15-degree angle. And it costs a little over 15 bucks. Now, you would think that a $15 knife is worthless. It, the exact opposite is true. What you have is a utilitarian knife that really, really works. So I'm going to put the links to both those knives in the description below this video. But I got to tell you, the Victor Inix, you will never be sorry if you get that. All right, so let's move on. We're going to go, we're going to do, uh, well, let me pause and I'll get the celery out and I'll get stuff ready to go. Hold on. Kind of coming back here, I just want to show you, this, this is what the, what the uh, that's basically what the Victor Inix looks like. And then this is what the Mercer looks like. It's almost identical. I mean, if you, if you looked at the two of them uh, side by side, it's, it's really, you know, <laughs> it's kind of weird. Anyway, all right. So going back here, we just want to get the celery. Uh, don't want the big pieces because whatever, they're, they're just kind of two fibers. But um, again, we don't, really big, we don't want as big pieces as full mouth, mouthfuls either. So just going to cut these down a little bit, the onions to kind of soften up, and then we're done. And that's all we got. That's all there is to it. So we'll put that in that bowl there. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is mushrooms. Now, there's a lot of different things you can put in these curries. This is all a matter of taste. It's not, there's no, there's no rhyme or reason or, or you have to do this or you have to do that. Now, with the mushrooms, I don't like to buy sliced mushrooms. I like to buy them just like this, already with the stems. Now, I'll tell you, these are just the standard white mushrooms that you buy in virtually any store. I will tell you that you can also use shiitake mushrooms, dried shiitake mushrooms, but if you do that, they're very tasty, a lot of umami flavoring. The only problem with them is, is that you have to make sure that you hydrate them back to their, their original size before you start slicing using them. Now, this is where this curved um, peeling knife comes in. I don't particularly like stems on, on these type of, of mushrooms. I like to cut them out, so I'm just basically doing a little cut around the edge here, and those pop right out, and that's what you have left. And that just goes in the trash. I, that way these slice up really nicely, and there's never an issue. And you don't have, sometimes these have a kind of a little bit no, the flavor is not quite what I want. And I know that a lot of places have the stems as part of the slices, but, you know, to each his own. I'm making this food tonight. You do what you want. Remember that this is a not, there's no recipe. There's no formal recipe for what I'm doing tonight. This is all a matter of taste and deciding what you want to put in. If you like things like uh, bell peppers or whatever, feel free. I don't think it would be all that good in curry, but, you know, you never know. All right, so we're ready for that. And then all we do with these is we just basically do nice thin slices, just like you get in the store. And just, those are gonna go in the saute. They just get slightly browned up. Remember, I'm not cutting these down. So these are in fairly decent sizes, you know? 
and they'll just be part of the curry, which they, they have quite a bit of the curry flavor, which is awesome. And one more time. And these will be ready to go. Oops. All right. So I've got all this stuff ready to go in the pot, and we're pretty getting pretty close to uh, our mise en place being complete, which means that I deserve, I do deserve, I deserve another Irish whiskey. I'm hoping that I'm not slurring by the time I finish this curry. All right, so what do we have so far? We've got, we've got carrots, onions, we've got uh, potatoes, we've got uh, a slurry for, for ginger, shallots, and, and uh, garlic. We've got some, some uh, we have mushrooms. Now, a couple more things I want to do with this, and then we'll stop. This is an apple, and it's surprising. You don't think of an apple going in curry, but this is the secret ingredient. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel this, and then I'm going to uh, basically shred some of it, and I'm going to save some of that shred, and we're going to put it into the, the roux just after, just before it's getting ready to be done um, and, and served. In the meantime, my, my baby shrimp is, is thawing out. It should be pretty close. My baby peas will be ready to go. And so I'll be back with you as soon as I get this, uh, this apple peeled and shredded a bit. All right? All right, everything's cut. Everything, all of our mise en place, all of our prep work is ready to go. It's all sitting next to the stove. We're going to be going over there, and we're going to start cooking over there. And we'll talk about it while I'm over there. Here we go. All right, so what you can see, as you can see, a pot over here, I've got two and a half cups of water in there. Basically, that's going to be the base of our, our, uh, our curry and roux. I'm heating it up first because I'm going to throw the potatoes and the carrots in there just to kind of soften them up. What I want is to have them about fork tender before uh, we add the other items. But while those are starting to cook, we're going to start sauteing up the other things in, in uh, our pan here. The key to good sauteing to start is to have pan hot and oil hot or fat hot, whatever you're cooking in. So we'll turn this on medium high for now and we'll get that going as well. Once we check it with some water, we're going to throw a little water in the pan here and we're going to see if as soon as it starts to dance, we'll know it's ready to put the oil in. So while we just doing a couple of things of little administrative stuff here. So, you know, it's already it's pretty quick. Now, I got to tell you, I am not a fan of, of nonstick cookware. I like stainless steel. I like it because I can cook on induction too. I also don't like the fact that if you do any damage to Teflon, it can actually be damaging to your health. So I have to be very careful. So what we're going to do first, we're going to put a little oil in here. And enough to fill the bottom. We don't have to worry. It doesn't matter that you're just using the very, the very little that you can because it's not really all that critical. So we get that going. I'm going to wait for that to start seeing some streaming in the oil as it gets hot enough to be close to uh, where it's ready to smoke. And then we're going to flavor the oil with the shallots, the ginger, and the garlic. And we're just going to let that kind of flavor a little bit. And then from there, we'll start adding the onions and the others. This looks like this pot's hot enough. We're going to go ahead and put the carrots and the, and the, and the uh, potatoes in there for now. And if we need to, if we're not done with the others once they're, once they're uh, soft, we will take them out temporarily. It's not a big deal. All right, looking good now. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add our shallots and our ginger and our garlic in here. Just kind of get this pot kind of getting moving. We're going to turn that down to medium heat, medium high, thereabouts. And add, whoo, boy, you can smell that coming off of there. That's awesome. That's exactly what we want. Exactly what we want. So that's all good. And now we're just going to add the onions initially and start getting those a little bit more translucent. 
And you notice I've made these a little bit larger. They're not really diced like you would dice, and I just spread them. You can actually make them bigger, but this is the way I like them for my curry. So, you know, that it's every, everybody has their own idea on how to do this. Remember that real cooking is not about following a recipe to exact tablespoon and half a tablespoon and a quarter tablespoon or whatever. It's all about taste. It's all about experimentation. Put a little pepper in here and we'll put some salt in there as well. Notice I'm not using any kind of measuring spoon. It's all to taste. I'm going to move that around a bit. Remember that the last thing we're going to put in the saute pan is the mushrooms because they will, they will definitely uh, soften up and start caramelizing a lot faster than the onions and the, and the celery. At this point I'll put the celery in too. That's going to take a little bit to do too. We want to get that softened up and that's important. Let's see, that's on high so that's good. And this will take a few minutes. We're just getting it down. If you want, uh, I may just, uh, at some point you may see it click off and click back on. I might, uh, if it's taken too long, I might take a little pause and then come back when things are ready for the next, the next level, the next step. Still getting this all down. It smells great. Can you smell that through the camera? I don't know. Yeah, that's awesome. Get a little bit more heat on there, I think. And then we have our secret weapons. All right, I'm back. And we are, are we filming? Let me make sure. Oh, yeah. Okay, so what's happening now is that we're going to, the, the, the potatoes and the carrots are just getting about fork soft. So now we're going to put everything that we cooked in there in the saute pan into the pot. And we'll stir that up and get the We'll add just a little bit more salt. And mix it up a little bit more. And then we're going to put the shrimp in just to get them starting to get uh, pink. So those are going in. That's the end. And we'll just get those cooking just a little bit. We're going to turn this heat down now. In fact, I'll put it over on this one here so that we can look at it better. And the shrimp will cook rather quickly. And everything looks really good. Now, it doesn't look like much right this second, but in a few minutes it's going to look phenomenal. So, make sure the heat's on. Yep. All right. And the shrimp is, as you can see, is you get one here it's getting a nice pink flavor and they're warming up really nicely all right so now it's time to start putting in the roux and here we go we're just going to put in these these chunks one at a time you know get them mixed up in here and and watch what happens here we're going to start stirring this look at the look at the density of the water that was in there. It's starting to really thicken up and it'll continue to thicken up as those roux cubes that we've made start to melt. And if it's at the end it should be relatively thick. If it's not thick enough you can just leave it on the stove and let it and let it uh, basically work itself down. But you can see already that it's it's very getting very nice and thick. It's really really nice. And we're about to add the secret ingredients. All right, so now we got the apple. We're putting the apple in there. The apple shreddings is a big secret. In, in Japan, the uh, best curry restaurants actually do exactly that. They put in in the uh, they put in apple. And now the second ingredient that nobody ever knows about is a couple of good squirts of honey in there. That's just the right amount of little sweet taste into it. It absolutely makes it well, it's super done. Most people don't know that either. They're just using the straight roux as it is. Look how thick that is now. It's just, it's just nice, thick. It's fantastic. 
And finally, we'll add some green beans to give it some color. Everything is melted now, and we're just about ready for plating. So in a minute, I'll change cameras, and we'll go over to back to the other table, and we'll plate this up the way that it would be excellent. Let me taste this. Oh, my God. That is awesome. And by the way, what you don't use, you can put into a container and put in the refrigerator. It will last for at least about a week in the refrigerator. All you need to do is heat it up, and it's as good the second day, if not better. Mm. Oh, my God. That is so awesome. All right. Let's move to the other, other, other pot. All right. So here we are. I've got this plate here that we use for... You know, you get a nice plate like this. I have my rice. I'm going to do the rice. And here's the way we like to do it with the rice. We like to form it. We don't like, you know, everything about plating should be as good. So I'm, when I get done plating this rice, you'll see what I'm talking about in just a second. Yeah. Get it nice and rounded. A little bit more. A good size plate full. All right. So what I've done is I've created. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that with? Uh, yeah. Well, it's pretty bright. But what I've done is I've rounded this so that it's nice. And then we're going to do. So we're going to take a mix of this, and we're going to basically put it around the rice. Not on the rice, but around the rice. We want to basically make it like a s swimmer around there. And and there's what you have. Now, as always, if you're smart, if you're a good if you're a good plater, you're going to take and clean the plate before service. So. One of these little edges here where I've got some some stuff on the edge. Want to get that right now. Japanese style is includes something called fuku jinzuke, which is is uh, pickled vegetables of, of various types. It's this stuff here, and it adds some crunch when you add it when you take a little bite of it. Generally, it's put on the side of the curry of the rice, and then. For some people, they like to have an extra little bit, and basically, uh, it, this is really a it, this is very very traditional. You won't find this much in the states. And then, we'll put the top back on that. Then we have beni shoga, which is just like the ginger you get in a uh, in a in a restaurant that uh, in a sushi bar or whatever, except that this is red ginger and it's been julienned. And to make plating really nice, you just take some of that and you just place it on the very top of the rice. It also adds some flavor. And take that, take that, get it in there. And voila, I'll take better pictures in just a moment. But basically, there is your your. Japanese curry rice, ready to eat. It's and that would be as good as what you would get in most uh, uh, good franchise Japanese curry restaurants. I'm going to eat this in a minute, but I'll take a couple of pictures, and those will end this. So watch the pictures at the very end. Thank you for watching. I hope this wasn't too long or too whatever. I'll have descriptions of some of the products I used uh, un underneath the description. Uh, I am an affiliate of Amazon, so if you are have an interest in those and you click those. You won't pay another dime than you would normally, but if you decide to buy something that's listed down there, I get a little bit of commission, which helps me make these videos and use the and buy product to be able to cook with. So thank you for watching. Please, if you liked it, subscribe. You can also hit that bell so that you get a notification whenever we make a new video. Remember, I will be making a video sometime in the near future on how to make Japanese curry from absolute scratch, no with no store bought uh, roux or curry items. And I hope that uh, you'll enjoy it. Um, 
when I do that. It's a lot more difficult, but boy, is the, is the results better in the, in the long run. It's just fantastic. So uh, enjoy, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.